Hi golfers, Nick here from Golf Tips Singapore. It's Friday, so welcome to another lesson on golf tips. This week on Golf Tips, we're gonna take a look at a 30 yard pitch shot, how to play the shot, how to stop the ball quickly. We're also gonna look at some 3D data and also some GC quad data. So for today's video, I'm gonna play two shots and I'm gonna take a look at the data. We're also gonna take a look at my normal technique as well. So the first shot will be my normal sort of standard technique that I play from sort of 30 yards. Then I'm gonna play another one where I try and create a bit more spin. So a lot of golfers are led to believe that the more you hit down on the ball, the more spin you create. So we're gonna take a look at that and test that out. Before we do that, I'm just gonna to explain to you a little bit about the grid here. So you can see I've got the grid set up as I do in all my videos, but you may notice these lines are a little bit straighter. And that's to do with the way the club is designed. So normally, if we have like a seven iron, the angle of the club is um, a lot greater, whereas today it's going to be a little bit more upright with a shorter club. And a putter would be even more upright. So with a putter, the grid would be a lot straighter. With a driver, it would be at the most angle. So we have a wedge, so it's a little bit straighter than normal. So you can see these lines here are slightly different to the way I would normally set up with a grid. So I'm going to bring up the video here just so you guys can see, but this is how I'd play like a normal sort of pitch shot from 30 yards. So feet pretty close together, you can see both of them sort of flared out, ball position in the centre. Uh, the handle very slightly forward of the club head. I see a lot of players with a lot of mistakes made around the green when they start to lean the shaft. And the problem is when you start to lean that shaft, it takes off that bounce and it makes it a lot harder to control and have any sort of forgiveness. So you take off that bounce, that club will sort of dig into the ground. Club face is very slightly open. When we play in these shots, we want to play them with speed. And when you open the face, it just makes the ball come off a little bit slower, less smash factor, makes it easier to pop up into the air, makes it easier to stop the ball in the green. So I'm trying to hit this ball high and trying to get it to stop really quickly. So just to recap there, as before I play the shot, so ball position in the middle, feet slightly flared, weight frame on the left, minimal shaft lead. And I'm gonna play this shot, I'm gonna try and use the loft to try and pop this up in the air and try and get it to stop quickly. So face slightly open as well. So you can see they're pretty high, pretty straight. Pitch 35, stops I think 35, so virtually stopped as it landed. So I'm gonna move on now, I'm gonna play a shot where I try and create a bit more spin, see if it stops quicker. So I'm gonna use the same ball for this, Pro V1. So I had about 6,000 revolutions of spin on that first shot. You saw that it stopped pretty quickly, it actually had two yards of roll. So it pitched 33, rolled to 35. So the second shot, I'm gonna try and create a bit more spin. And a lot of players, the way they explain that to me would be, try and hit down on the ball more to create more spin, which I guess kind of makes sense, but we're gonna test that out and see, see if that makes a difference to how much roll you get on the shot and look at the landing angle and see how easy it is to control. So let's try and create a bit more spin by playing this ball a bit further back and trying to hit down on it more to create that spin. Okay, so you saw there, I just overshot that shot. Let's just quickly take a look at the spin before we take a look at the two swings in detail. Okay, interesting. Virtually exactly the same spin, but you saw the difference in the way those balls flew. So let's sit down now, take a look at the swings in detail and take a look at the quad data, just see what the difference is. So you see me hit a couple of shots there on the quad, so interesting sort of data. It was quite a tricky little shot that I played there. So the first, first one stopped within two yards on the down slope onto the green. The second one actually rolled over the back. So there was a lot more roll on that second shot. According to the data, uh, there was about five yards extra roll with the second shot, but I think it was a bit more because the ball stopped in the rough on the other side. So what you did notice was that with that first one, even though there was slightly more spin on the second one, the ball stops a lot quicker. And that's because it's not just about spin. To stop the ball on the green, you've got to have the descent angle, the height. This is what's gonna help the ball stop on the green. So comparing some data there, um, the clubbed speed was basically the same within one mile an hour. Uh, the ball speed was faster on the second one because it came off lower. Uh, the launch angle was 15 degrees higher with the first one, which gave it an extra three yards of height, which gave it also a 15 degree more greater descent angle and that's what helps the ball stop when you're hitting into these greens it's not just about spin you've got to be able to get the height as well so virtually similar spin you can see the numbers there within 10 revolutions uh, just taking a look at some data so the smash factor is important as well so efficiency was um, 0.85 with the second one 0.73 with the first one so the ball comes off a lot slower off the face so basically the efficiency is a smash factor one to one would be the same clubbed speed and ball speed you can see these come off slower with the more loft 
and with the driver you expect that to be closer to 1.5 but with a wedge you want that smash factor lower that's what's going to help the ball come off softer off the face if you take a look at the data you saw uh, also when I had the ball further back my attack angle was steeper with the second one not necessarily makes that much difference in spin it's more about speed uh, quality of strike and loft that helps you get the spin on the ball and the stopping potential uh, taking a look at the club path club path was around zero with the first one uh, second one's more into out so when you play the ball back that just gives you that more inside path we talked about that with the grid so interesting data there you saw that first one's going to be much more efficient when you're playing the shots around the green so let's take a look at my swing my normal swing and then we're just going to do a quick comparison between the two. First thing we can do is take a look at the swing so I'm just going to play it out to start with just so you can see it in full motion uh, now what I'm going to do is just put a line on the hip here now just notice when I play this swing out how in the finish I've moved forward of that line. So it's the same with every shot, you move forward with the weight as you go through. Now I'm just gonna leave that line there, it's gonna look at a couple of things. So first of all, as I swing back, um, as we get to this sort of position here where the shot's parallel to the ground, just looking at some data here quickly. I've just pulled on some numbers onto the screen there so you can see shoulder turn, hip turn. So even at this stage here, with the shot's parallel, I'm still turning my body. Um, even on these pitch shots. So when we get to left arm parallel, you can still see we've almost got 75 degrees worth of shoulder turn at that point, 33 of hip turn. It's still important to turn the body even on these little shots around the green. Now coming into uh, impact position, the turns at the impact again, I'm still turning my body and that's really important. Notice also on the right here, I've moved in front of that line. So I'm moving my weight through and the shaft is just leaning slightly forward. Uh, you might see it more of a full swing. Okay, I'm just going to take away the data there quickly. So I just want you to notice as well on the left-hand screen, when I get to sort of shaft parallel, the club here is just slightly outside the hands and coming into the ball is quite straight. This path was exactly zero. So when you're playing these shots around the green, the path's going to be hopefully around zero. Like we talked about these grid lines. Uh, the path's going to be a little bit straighter than you would probably do with a full swing. So you can just see how the club delivers in through the ball but still on the finish, the hands and the club still working their way around to the left. We pulled up some numbers there on the finish, so just when the right arm's parallel, as I've swung through there, I'm still turning my body. 66 degree hip turn, 87 degree shoulder turn, and my hip sways are green, so um, my shoulder sway. So you can still see I'm not moving away from the target to try and lift this ball up. I'm just using that loft to pop the ball up into the air. So finally, I just want to compare the two swings. So on the left there was my normal swing where we saw the ball pop up into the air and stop a lot quicker. Even though both of these had virtually the same spin rate, the one on the left was stopped quicker because it launched higher and came from a slightly steeper descent angle as well. So in terms of the swing, you'll see how I'm playing the ball a lot further back from my left shoulder um, on the one on the right here. And that's what gives it that slightly steeper angle attack and slightly more outward hit on the ball out to the right, so slightly more from the inside. In terms of the actual swing, um, I've got more wrist hinge on the left, even though virtually the same sort of body movements at this point, there's a little bit more wrist hinge and I'm trying to sort of slide the club underneath, trying to use the bounce. Uh, if we go into impact area, you'll see how there's more sort of shaft lean on the right hand side here. So you see this ball just sort of launch off a lot lower, um, which makes it a lot harder to stop the ball in the green. Uh, so just moving this into the finish position here, you'll see how the one on the left, I'm starting to use the wrist and starting to slide the club underneath. That's what pops the ball up into the air. This one on the right is more of like a, a wider finish. So you can see, don't quite get to shaft parallel, but you can see how much wider the swing is. So it's very important when you're around the green, you start to use your wrist, so it's decide to use the bounce on the club to pop that ball up into the air. It's really important. That's gonna help you stop the ball in the green. It's not about trying to keep that forward shaft lead to create spin. So really interesting stuff there, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Any questions on that, post them in the box below. If you don't already, please follow me on my other social media platforms. And we'll see you again soon for another lesson on golf tips. The most